Well, Richard, you talk to exhibitors around the world more than mm -hmm. anyone. Can you talk about what they think about 3D, both from an audi audience experience mm -hmm. and a business perspective? Sure. sure. Um, firstly, from an audience perspective, um, I believe the key issue with 3D today is the lack of brightness uh, mm -hmm. on screen. Um, the systems that are installed are, as we know, uh, designed for 2D and 3D um, presentations, but there is only a standard um, for brightness for, for 2D. Mm -hmm. So all the systems are actually geared up for the 2D system, uh, for, the, for the 2D image. But there's nothing that actually says you need this amount of brightness of 3D. Um, and the problem is, with the current limitations of the technology, talking about projection, illumination systems, 3D systems, screen materials, you just cannot get the light levels required for 3D images that you can for 2D and I think that is like the holy grail if we could actually achieve that I think there will be lots of happy customers lots of happy uh, exhibitors um, and I for one um, would love to be able to go to a theatre and actually enjoy the 3D experience with big bright images and seeing all the details in the movies as I do with a, a 2D image. Really, for an exhibitor, the bottom line is if audiences are, are not choosing to see the 3D version of a film, then they're missing out on revenue, which impacts their business of course. negatively. Of do, you course. Think, do you think exhibitors are looking to us to be part of the solution to that? Absolutely, Don, because you know Christie's the leader in digital cinema projection, and I think that we are the people that need to come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. um, the technology, I think, is at its maximum um, performance levels in terms of Xenon-driven technology. Um, so yeah, I think the manufacturers, Christie, we do need to have this, um, this, this responsibility put upon us to actually make the technology available and viable to allow this, this, this next step, this next evolution in cinema um, for 14 foot Yeah, I, I think the timing for this kind of discussion is ideal because after five or six years of, of heavy research and development now, we're five, finally ready, finally oh, ready wow. to bring laser projection to market. I think because we're now talking about laser being here, I think we need to maybe just discuss what actually Chris D6P is, what it actually looks like, what the components, and, and what, what are the issues that the 6P system overcomes. Okay, yeah? well, like you said, first and foremost, 6P is going to help us produce a brighter image on screen. Yeah. But it's, it's more than just that. And let me sort of break it down into what 6P means versus 3P and other, other mm -hmm. projection systems. So fundamentally, any, any digital image is made up of red, green, and blue colors yep. and a mixture of those over millions yep. of pixels. Um, with a 6P laser system, mm -hmm. we have a red, green, and blue for your left eye okay. and a separate red, green, and blue primary color set of primary colors for your right eye. Okay. Then simply have these filter glasses mm -hmm. that block the image that's that's intended that's to the opposite eye. That's not required for the eye, absolutely. Yeah, and that gives you your stereoscopy, it gives you your, okay. your, your separate images that we use as our primary means mm -hmm. for depth perception. So we have two projectors running simultaneously, which is a totally different approach yeah. from our traditional single uh, projector 3D, which for is triple sure. flashing. So we have one projector for the left eye, one for the right eye. So each one of those projectors is driven by a bank of laser modules of red, green, and blue. And there are differences in wavelengths between them. And the yeah. glasses actually filter out the image that you're not supposed yep. to see. And, one and image this, is, this is in contrast to the way that 99% of movie theaters do it today, where we have one projection head, mm -hmm. and it flashes between the images, yep. as you say. Mm -hmm. and, and that produces a reasonable 3D effect, but it's very unnatural for yeah. your, your brain to have to do a, a temporal correction on yeah. the image mm -hmm. at the same time as trying to figure out both images. And, the, and there know. must be a dark period between the two images, yeah, so, so that a also a has a bit of, of an effect of, of lack of light on the screen. Sure, okay. sure. So we have two projectors, um, two laser banks, one for each projector. So those lasers are modular so we can actually populate the rack to give the required yeah, brightness. Yeah, it's, it's a fiber coupled system, so mm -hmm. all the lasers, laser modules sit in a rack outside of the projector, mm -hmm. and that provides various architectural advantages. Yep. And, and the, laser, the laser modules themselves are sitting in racks that are remote from the projector, so they're coupled with a fiber optic, mm -hmm. and they can be physically located Yep. in a different place than the projector has. Well, that, that gives another benefit, surely, for the exhibitor in the future, 
possibly the projector could be mounted on the ceiling in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. You have the fiber optic cable connected to the laser modules in a separate room, so you don't need a projection booth. So you could get three rows of seats extra to obviously put more revenue into the theater. Because mm -hmm. um, there seems to be a trend or a need to want to go down the booth list path. So maybe this is a way that, that, that the technology can actually solve a problem there as well as a byproduct. Certainly, but beyond that, I mean, our modular approach gives us the ability to set up a laser system for 20,000 lumens mm -hmm. or 100,000 lumens, depending on the size of the screen and the needs of the exhibitor. Absolutely. It's completely modular. And that, that's really important because there are no fixed screen sizes in the world. They're all different. Mm -hmm. um, It'd be great if an exhibitor could actually have his largest screen, which could be 25 meters. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being able to actually illuminate that to 14 foot Lambert's with a matte white screen? It's incredible. No silver screen, no hotspot, a matte white screen, 14 foot Lambert's with laser. You can scale it, you can move it from theater to theater if you need to do so. Um, it must be the only technology available that allows that brightness levels on a white screen. So you keep mentioning white screens. Do you mm. think exhibitors will have any preference for white versus yeah, silver? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think the general consensus is that silver screens aren't ideal. You get a hot spot, you don't get uniformity of the image. If you're sat in the bottom left hand seat, your hot spot's in the bottom left hand corner no of the screen. There's no action there. There's no action there. So you get this, this, this horrible effect of, you know, you feel you're missing something uh, with the silver screen. And, and also in 2D, what, what does an image look like in 2D on a silver screen? It's a big hot spot and the silver doesn't actually yeah. help the color reproduction. The same uniformity issues. Absolutely. Of course, a white screen costs substantially less than a silver yep. screen and lasts longer. And, and, so. and of course, obviously, you know, the, the, the whole driving um, factor behind cinema projectors is the DCI color space. So having a white screen, that must keep the DCI color space intact. Absolutely, it gives will. you more accurate color reproduction. Yeah. But one other thing we've done in the design of our 6P laser system is we've gone to great lengths to make sure that the left eye image and the right eye image mm -hmm. are both within the DCI specified color space. So that's you get really critical, perfect isn't it? Perfect reproduction of color according to the filmmaker's intent. And that's absolutely what is required. Yeah. So to have the vision of the filmmaker at the brightness level that is comfortable, that is mm -hmm. desired, at the colors that are required, that's got to be the perfect solution. You know, I don't think I've ever looked at anything and done this, no. alternating my eyes. <laughs> no, you're very, this is absolutely Why do we do that? Why would you do theaters? that? Yeah. Why would you do that? So, you know, all these things, it, it really does seem to me that Christie is really trying to address known current issues, which are partly technically driven, mm -hmm. partly maybe commercially driven, and to actually maybe throw the blueprint of what we know and what we've done best for many years, throw that away and start again from the ground up to try and address specific problems. Press start, Fresh check start. all the boxes. Absolutely. Brightness, color, contrast, white screen, simultaneous Natural left brain eye images. Natural. Scalable. Absolutely. Scalable. Repeatable. What about the, um, the, the maintenance? Sure, there isn't any. Or, or compared to a traditional you know, 3D system. The Christie system. 6P laser system is designed for 30,000 30, hours of use mm -hmm. at a very slight brightness reduction. So mm -hmm. we figure that, that after 30,000 hours, we'll be at 80% brightness. But of course, because it's modular. Just add another unit. Okay. So, so this to me, it's almost following the great advances in cinema down the years. So you went from silent to talkies. You went from black and white to color. You went from analog to digital audio. Mm -hmm. Is this really a quantum leap of that magnitude? I think this is a revolution. You know, it gives really? exhibitors the freedom, the freedom to show 3D films mm -hmm. at 2D light levels. And that's what the industry's been looking for.